welcome to the Town of Deerfield um, Select Board Board of Health meeting uh, for September 28th, 2022. It's 6 p.m. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting. Um, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person uh, attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting uh, or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room in the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Um, the remote participation information is found on the Deerfield, town of Deerfield website. Down by the calendar, you'll see a link to this meeting for the Select Board Board of Health for today. Um, there's a dial-in toll-free number if you'd like to um, participate by phone. It's 833-548-0276. Uh, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and a passcode is 570012. You will also see um, a link to our agenda. On that agenda, you'll see a hyperlink to the Zoom meeting. So if you'd like to participate by Zoom, you can do that as well. Meeting attendees should mute their phones, which is star six for landlines, or if you're on the um, on the Zoom, just, just mute your attendance and then, unless asking questions or commenting, all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished and then, you know, clearly state your name and um, where you're from. And so I will call the meeting to order. The first, um, first thing I'd just like to, um, have our thoughts out to for our fellow Americans in, in um, Florida are going through a really, really rough night. We're gonna be going through a rough night, had a really rough day. I think this um, hurricane damage is gonna be a lot more extensive than anyone really has any idea. It's gonna have, you know, storm surge of, you know, who knows, even eight feet, they're talking much higher than that, but for a very extended amount of time. And, um, and that hurricane will last um, going through the center, kind of walking across the state. It's going so slow, dumping a ton of rain. And really, it's the after effects. Really, it's, you know, these homes that have had eight feet of water in them, very humid in Florida. When you come back in a week or two, if they ever get power back on that early, um, full of mold. And we're going to have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people looking for a place to live. A lot like Katrina, it's going to be devastating. So our thoughts are out to them tonight, and um, hopefully there's ways we can help in the future. So um, let's see. So um, we have public comment. Uh, we'll just do public comment pretty quickly here. I am going to take, um, normally we do public comment in this section, and we don't take public comment on any other items on the agenda. But with the um, with the sewer, we have a lot of large items um, to talk about. So um, I, I would take public comment tonight on those items if they want to hold those until that time for uh, for specifically just the sewer. We are going to have a hearing tonight for the expedited uh, permit for a new grow LLC will be a spot for um, public comment there as well. So um, so we'll get we'll get to that. And then um, we have a little bit of time, about 10 minutes or so before the hearing starts. So we could knock out a couple of other things because I know we, you know, we want to move, move the meeting along. We could hit the um, Yankee Candle Village special liquor license if you want to do that real quickly yeah. and knock okay. that out. Um, so I think if I just sit over here. <clears throat> Did you find it? Mm -hmm. You have Trevor, the, the um, licenses themselves for signature is in the signature file. Okay, great. So um, this would be a, uh, a one day liquor license. This would be an event outside in the courtyard, weather permitting October 8th, 9th, and 10th. So I think they just set up before and after, but uh, I think it's the 9th, I would imagine would be the It's actually several days. It's for, I think, the whole long weekend. 
Columbus oh, okay. Oh, there's three yep. one-day liquor license. Got right. It. So Columbus Day weekend event. This would be a weekend event happening. Yep, Saturday, October 8th through the Monday, the, the 10th. We'll have music activities outside in the courtyard, weather permitting. So I'd entertain a motion to. Uh, I'll make that motion. Approve the, approve yeah. the um, three one-day liquor licenses. And for the second that. Thank you. Holiday yeah. weekend. Any um any other discussion on this? I assume they've got everything in order. I think they do. I see the liability insurance. So yep, we're good to go. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right, we'll sign these. Trevor. Yes. You have an item on anticipated. Um, Julie Shalfont's here on behalf of the building advisory committee. She oh, I don't know how much time she needs, um, but they do have a recommendation about design services for the 1888 building. So Julie, do you have a moment? We have, you know, seven minutes or so. Do you want to, <laughs> I could bring that up forward if you want, or we could do something a little later on. I'm not sure if she's at her, at her computer or not, so. Julie, are you there? Oh, yes, perfect. she is, great. That way you don't have to hang out. For all our meeting. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. And we don't have any, Julie. So we were looking at. Um, we have a few minutes. If you had a had a bit of time just before our our hearing, um, I know that you were entertaining and looking at different. Okay. Now can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, <laughs> So Town Building Advisory Committee, um, with the assistance of our OPM that we hired, P3, um, issued an RFQ for designer services for the 1888 building. So this is architect, engineer, designer. Um, we got nine responses. We reviewed all nine responses thoroughly, rated them against the evaluation criteria, and selected three to interview. We held interviews Monday evening, I guess. Um, and after holding the interviews, we met and discussed and ranked the three. Um, and the procedure is that you, we would, assuming you guys agree, we would go um, and negotiate with number one on the list. And if we can come to an agreement, that's who we would hire if for some reason agreement can't be met you proceed on to number two and then to number three. Um, so the, the ranking in order, number one was B, H, and A. Number two was P, R, A. And number three was Dietz and Company. So we recommend that we um, reach out to B, H, and A um, to negotiate a price for designer services for the 1888 building. Sounds good to me. Um, question? Uh, yeah, Julie, could you, ex uh, if you have the figures, could you tell tell us how many people voted, or was it unanimous that this order took place? Um, how many supported the um, Yes, yeah, so there were four members of the Town Building Advisory Committee there, and it was a unanimous vote. Um, I'm looking for my notes. See if I have anything else. Um, yep. Um, so that yeah, that was it. There were four of us there, and it was unanimous. Okay, thank you. With that ranking. Mm -hmm. The only reason I mentioned this is because um, I did sit in on this on Monday, and the initial response of everyone was well, except Julie. Was that PRA was choice? But then, um, then there was some discussion, and then I think some people changed their mind. So, um, just wanted. To yeah, we had a lot of discussion on it um, for quite a while, um, and there are a number of good points raised. Um, I mean, I can give a summary of that discussion if you want to. Yeah, um, real quickly. Okay. So, reading off of my notes. So BH&A, BH&A is a big firm, so they have a lot of resources they can bring to it. They have a big team. Um, their presentation 
was both the written presentation and the oral presentation were both very good. Um, but let me back up and start over. The first comment that we all made was that any one of the three we feel would be perfectly capable of doing the job. Yeah. They are all like well qualified. We feel like we get good designs out of them, you know, that they would um, be cost conscious, you know, all of that and be able to work with P3 and work with us. So all three of them were, I mean, it, it was a hard decision. All three of them were really quite good. So the differentiators, BHNA, as I said, is a big firm, a lot of resources. Um, their, their outreach was really good. Like the, the, the handout was very clear, easy to read. They had example after example of here's a problem with your building. Here's an example that we've done in a different building that would correct that. You know, that kind of thing. It was, it was very clear, visually very appealing. So if they're producing um, materials for townspeople to take in the concept, they'll be able to read it, that kind of thing. Um, when we reached out to the three companies, we gave them specific things we wanted them to cover in their oral presentation. We said 15-minute oral presentation followed by questions. They covered the items that we wanted. They did it in 15 minutes. They answered all of our questions. You know, they, they were just very responsive and good. PRA, um, they were very approachable. They, it's a small firm, much smaller firm. Um, they really only have two principal architect types. It's a six-member firm total. Um, so there was a little concern that they might not have the resources needed to be responsive in a really fast, mm -hmm. you know, fast moving project. Um, their presentation was long and didn't really answer the questions that we wanted them to answer. So, it, you know, if one of the criteria is can you present well and can you convey the opinion, you know, the the important information in a concise amount of time. They were a little shaky on that. Yeah. Um, and then DEETs um, were lovely. They were very responsive and friendly and it seems like, you know, great people to work with. But the examples they brought to the table were really not pertinent to our problem. So they had a historical example, but it was this huge, gorgeous building, but it was humongous. And it was a, you know, $25 million project or something. I don't remember the amount, but, it, you know, it was just not at the scale that we were looking at. Um, and then they go through, they went through and they presented, like, how would we work through a design problem? But their design problem example was a new construction building. So, it, again, not like their examples just didn't really tailor to the project that we were talking about. Um, those are the highlights of the response. But there was a lot of back and forth, and there was like, you know, bringing up different points. And, you know, we went back and forth a bit, but by the end, we were unanimous on the recommendation. Well, because we're um, pinched a bit on time, maybe we'll vote on this at the end. I just wanted to get, you know, so that Julie didn't have to stay the whole well, night. Well, I think we can just do it really quick. Oh, you're good to go. I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, uh, negotiate with BH and A with the stipulation that we discussed with them, a possible replacement of their civil engineering component of their team. Okay. And I will second that. So in, um, any further discussion on that? No. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank well, you, Julie. Thank that you, was Julie. really a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, great work on that. Thanks for you and your team, for sure. Been doing a lot of great work. <laughs> yeah, they did a great job. Great. Well, thank you. Have a great night. Um, so <clears throat> let's see. It is uh, 6.15, perfect timing. So um, I will um, going to read our, our uh, notice of, of public hearing. Uh, so we have um, a public hearing tonight, uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board Notice of Public Hearing. Pursuant to General Law, Chapter 43D, Expedited Permitting, the Deerfield Zoning uh, Bylaws, um, Chapter 179, Section 4700, 
4900 and 5300 expedited permitting district performance standards and special permit. The Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on September 28th, 2022 at 6.15 p.m. to consider an expedited permitting project application filed by NUPRO LLC for construction of a building to include offices, manufacturing, maintenance, storage, warehouse, parking area, and loading dock apron on property identified in the assessor's records as maps 168, lots 20, uh, 21, and lots 21, 2. Um, let's see, copies of the expedited permitting project application documents are on file for public review at the municipal offices during office hours and on the town's website at www.deerfieldma.us. Meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Um, let's see, for purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room in the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, 01373. Remote participation is um, also uh, on online and the toll free number if you'd like to call in and and participate is 833-548-0276 you can also um click on the zoom uh link i think it's it should be the same right casey i mentioned it's all the same meeting so if you're here already you're good to go um the meeting id is 911-604 uh, 1580. The passcode is 570012. So we'll call the hearing um, to order. And uh, as new pros here, and and maybe one development as well, want to come up and, and oh, and SVE, right? Engineering is here. So yep. come on on We're all here. up. And if you need a third seat, you're more than welcome. Yep, uh, we'll we can get it. Yeah, whatever we can yeah. do to make you welcome. And yeah, state, yeah, state your name and yep. My name is Derek Healy with One Development and Construction. We're the design builders on the project. And what we have here is an overall floor plan of the project to kind of explain what's going on in the facility and different components of the facility itself. So you can see over here is the main office area. It's approximately 10,000 square feet. Two thirds of that space is dedicated to office space. The other third is for employee amenities. You have the locker rooms, bathrooms, um, conference rooms, training rooms, break rooms in, in this part, which faces um, east. Uh, east, thank you. Yep. So, and then this area here is their manufacturing area. That's approximately 12,000 square feet. Um, which consists of their clean room with a mezzanine above for some of their mechanical equipment for their operations. The rest of the area here is slated for storage, warehouse racking, uh, mm -hmm. store uh, raw materials and finished product on opposite ends of the building, which ties into the loading docks. So you'll have two loading docks, um, well, three loading docks, and then a trash compactor and a driving door. The driving door is meant to get their equipment in and out of the facility. Um, you have your truckers lobby and a shipping office. So as the truckers pull in, they have somewhere to go in, check in. Mm -hmm. um, down the budding Merrigan Way is our fire pump room for our sprinkler system. <coughs> Main electric rooms. We have two services, two great 3,000 amp services coming into the building for this uh, facility. And in the back of the building is your maintenance and grinding area. That's where they do equipment maintenance. Um, so that's kind of the scheme of the overall site plan, or sorry, floor yep. plan. Sure. As you're driving down Merrigan Way, what you'll see is um, this is the view from Merrigan Way. So as you're coming down Merrigan Way, this is what the building, the curb appeal will be on the building coming down as you're looking at it. It's about uh, 44 8 in height at the ridge. Um, we built a full parapet along the front to kind of conceal the slope, give it a cleaner aesthetic look. Mm. Um, horizontal decorative IMP panel. Um, you have a nice airlock vestibule that you'll walk into and that area there is where the receptionist will sit and all the guests will check in. You also have two employee entrances, one down here and then one down here as well, as well as an egress door. Um, so that's kind of what the building will look like when we're done with it, just to give you uh, a presentation. Yeah. And then again, this kind of shows the site plan and I'll let Tony jump in in a minute here. Sure. 
when we compare these site plans, just to show you kind of what the overall site's going to look like. So you're going to come down Merrigan Way and employee parking is in front of the building. You have three infiltration basins, one, two, three to deal with the stormwater management. You have your loading docks out back, um, your fire pump rooms, and then a driving door to the maintenance area. This is that vestibule area. Um, so that's kind of the overall site plan. I think I'll let Tony pick it up from there. Sure. Thank you. I'm sure Tony wants to ask you this. Welcome. Associates. Yes. <laughs> in front of you presenting a, another wonderful project for the town of Deerfield. Um, I've got a couple of aerials that I thought I'd just give to the board oh, so you, you could look at. And this That'd goes back to 2005. And actually, I worked at the Pickle Tech when I was Is that right? probably in 71 to 70, oh, 72. Cover. 76. Yeah. So that is. Oh, we probably can't. Now the, we can't hear Trevor. Here, so maybe we'll just drop this here and then before, before after. And this is yep. where it is right now. Great. Okay. So and essentially, can, what I've I've given the board is a 2005 aerial that showed what the pickle uh, shop looked at at that time. And you can see the area uh, that encompasses um, the operations that were um, at that time. Uh, I believe the town actually took over that property in 2012. Um, yep. And then you get to see a 2015 shot, or no, an earlier shot, because it shows the highway garage yes. and it shows um, pilot. pilot precision. Yep. Um, which we came before you, uh, SVE and them, a while ago, and that's been constructed and operating Beautiful. for some time. It's very nice, well kept, clean. And so um, a little history on, on that um, is the, the town sold the property to New England Bakers back in 2018. They had a development, which if you look at this, is very similar to mm -hmm. what the board approved for that facility. I think this facility is bigger. It's close to 125,000 square feet, yeah. but um, very, very similar. Um, uh, unfortunate, that project did not go forward and the town reacquired the property in 2019, hired Heritage Surveys to recut the lots. Those are the two lots that That's was right. mentioned, 21 and 21-2. 21-2 21 is a non-building lot. It's kind of stuck at the back. I'll point that out. Yep. Um, and then most recently sold to New Pro. So, Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, just pull it right to the end yeah, there. That'd be great. Can you hear me? Everyone? Can you speak up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. So this is the site plan. Um, and um, it's Merrigan Way, Sugar Loaf Streets here, Old Druid Avenue is over here, uh, Coates Avenue comes in, um, Sugar Loaf Brook, aka Blacksmith Brook here, which is our northwesterly boundary, precision. <coughs> in the highway garage. So as you come in to Merrigan, our main employee entrance and customer entrance will be on the east side of the building. That's what Derek was saying. That's this yeah. view, that's where we're gonna park. Um, requirements in the town requires to have 94 parking spaces. Of those four will be ADA, two will be van accessible of the four. Right. Um, bicycle racking, there's an existing sidewalk for pedestrian purposes, if people decide to take mass transit at, you know, and, and get off the bus by the cemetery and walk, they can do that. Um, this driveway will be reworked and that sidewalk will be reworked. Then you'll have access to building there and that walk continues and then you have a crosswalk over into the highway department property. Uh, you'll see with this, if you can vision this on top of that mm -hmm. most current aerial, we're going to have a large lawn area for the northerly infiltration basin, easterly and westerly. I believe in the New England Bakers, they had a fairly large basin on this side, if I recall. Mm -hmm. um, so there'll be large buffers around the area. The area that gets tight is back in this area. But New Pro is planning on off this existing fence, adding a new stockade fence around this area so that we can shield residences this side and I'll get to a landscape plan just to okay. an idea some of the landscaping. Um, and so these will be they're small depressions. They're a foot and a half, two feet. They're really small, but we've got good soils there just like we had with pilot and yeah. um, 
and we intend to do the same similar type of, of infiltration to meet your regulations plus mm -hmm. regulations. With Blacksmith Brook, this is all riverfront resource, but it's degraded and we're going to improve that, which is a requirement uh, by having these infiltration basins, lawn areas, and then we're going to enhance the landscaping along the brook. I'll go through that a little bit um, uh, later on. Our truck entrance and our truck work will be back through here. Um, in our materials that we told, uh, submitted as part of our application, um, there will be, or they intend at some point, if not right away, to have three shifts operating within the building evening. Truck traffic and those deliveries in that will happen during the day, you know, seven to seven. Yes. We do have an outside power source, but that will be screened by fencing. And off of this um, end of the stockade fence, we will have security with a chain link fence that will come around the property and then a gate here to prevent people from getting back in this area. It will be open during daylight hours for, for access. And, and Jeff, say, if I'm saying something wrong, please, um, so uh, with the operations, the um, just let me know. Uh, so we have multiple blocks back here, trash <laughs> compaction, um, you know, recycling that ramp to get up into, um, into the building for equipment um, and so forth. The setbacks meet the minimum 25 to 26 off the front, got 104 to this corner and then 44 back here. So we meet those requirements. The building height is more, we, we must have had an old number. So if you look at sheet number two, it's not 38, it's 45 and change right. or something, 44. but it's still underneath the 48, Under the, yeah. um, which uh, is the maximum threshold in the code. So this will be all landscape. So we're gonna have a good buffer around the building. So if you can just visualize that as you drop that in, that would be helpful. Tony, I just had a quick question yes. before you take that down. Um, I, my eyesight is getting old. I can't see so good, but um, can you get a fire truck around on all sides? Is no. there access? No, but this building will be sprinkled. Um, okay. we, um, you can walk around the building. Um, but you can get you're going to get three sides for fire fighting okay. access. Mm -hmm. But it is sprinkled. We have very good pressure there. You should have received a, a, a flow test that was done uh, on behalf of the town. Um, and when I get to, we're going to re re relocate some facilities here that mm -hmm. the Southgate Bill Water District has and yeah. want to keep. So um, okay. I'm going to just jump up to my mm -hmm. plans. One more quick question. Yes. Um, relating the drawing that you have up had up there yeah. to um, the trees that are currently on the property. Yes, yes. Are you planning to remove trees or? No, no, not along the brook. Those trees are going to stay there. Much, if you looked at, you went out to the site, you see it's a lot of broken gravel. For all of that, it is. Tank there is broken gravel. There's weeds coming up. But all of the substantial standard trees in here can stay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Great. I, that's I, the visual back to neighbors on. Right. Um, uh, on uh, South, South Main, Main Street. Yes, yes. Yeah. and the, the, just a quick question on lighting. Yeah. I know it's a little premature, but uh, you know, being a good neighbor, you just want to make sure the lighting is, yeah, you know, and away we, from our neighborhood. We actually, I think, in their submittal application, showed we had a photometric plan done. And yeah. another thing, the reason why we need the special permit action is, is we're exceeding the height on the pole. So we have four poles in the parking area that we have at 25 feet. Yep. And when I get to the um, to the photometric plan, I'll show you. They're still over okay. in Merrigan Way, which I don't think is a problem. That's probably a good thing right. for that street. It's an industrial street. That's what right. the town line set it up that way. Um, back here, we get a little bit of flow because we're really close here and we're lighting off the building for security purposes, but it's in the tree line. It's not going to affect the um, okay. field of it. Um, it's all cut off, shut down Good. lighting, um, but we are exceeding that full height, so we don't have to put a, a, a number of other ones in. I did notice that there was a peer review done, and I just got a chance to read that tonight. There could be some discussions with the owner about maybe timing some of that. I think that's Correct. done the, the LED lights, which means that they distribute the light much better than the LED doesn't where it's really hot right. and, um, and so forth. So there. If that's a major concern after we get started um, mm -hmm. and you start viewing it, if those issues it probably can be controlled a little bit. Okay, great. So um, my plan, yeah, these are actually pretty, pretty 
pretty close to construction drawings. So they have a lot of details. I won't go into the real construction details, but I think there's <clears throat> some things that the board, um, I can show you better on this besides just the site plan. So it's hard to see for you, but on the cover sheet, if you look at the plans, you see the facility and you can see how that fits in over that uh, aerial mm -hmm. that I yeah. gave you. You can see where the pavement will be and all of those large green spaces, which is going to is a significant change from the old Oxford building. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there, in here, there's a grading plan. This was studied, the existing property was studied numerous times. Um, we've done some of our own investigating. Um, but as you can see, this there's not a lot of grading with this site. The building's gonna sit a little higher, obviously, on the parking. We've got these depressions here, but they're small depressions. Um, they uh, are not anything like, well, if you looked at the old Oxford Pickle, Everything that drained from there, there was a number of catch bases, went to this little detention area in back, which is still there, yeah. it's still functioning. And that's where this one will discharge to that after it intercepts. Um, you got water that goes this way, and you got water that goes this way. We have one here, but it's all significantly reduced with this. Mm -hmm. If you look at the area that we have for infiltration, We've got over an acre. We got 67,500 square feet of infiltration area. That little existing basin is only about 2,700 square feet. It's okay. a huge increase, yeah. but we don't need to, you know, create really deep basins in that. Um, it's just not, you know, similar to here. This is a little deeper on pile, but these we have area to be able to do that and keep it less easily mowed and maintained. Right. Um, just so you understand uh, a little bit about the um, utilities. So we have the existing main in there again. We're gonna do our um, fire connection to this room because that's where the fire suppression room is. Mm -hmm. And our electrical room is here. So there'll be a new transformer. There's an existing water main that Southwest Water District owns. Yeah. I don't believe it's an easement, but um, they own that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna relocate that from up here, coming off the Coast Avenue, running around our base and bring it down. And we're gonna actually tie into a main here that goes out to Sugar Oak Street, put in a new hydrant, and also take our water service to the building there. That's how we're gonna do the, the, the water um, and fire service to the building. There's an existing <clears throat> manhole. We know that that's good because we got an easement for pilot to tie to that. That's the main interception line that goes through, I believe it's 21. Yeah, years. yeah, it is. Um, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna take our sewer out this way and tie to that same manhole. And so, then we still have an easement, I think, coming across that property, which it yes, looks like it's open yes, uh, yes. on the east, right, on right the east, uh, on the east side, there's a <coughs> sewer easement that comes across right, to our town underground. building. Yeah, 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 that's the main trunk. Right. Right. Okay. So that's how we'll do sewer. So drainage, if you look at drainage, and this is conservation, we've had a, a, a meeting with them. Uh, I know we had a, and we had a meeting with them and they're, they're going to send it out for the peer review. So they'll be, they'll be looking at that. And, um, and um, we've got to follow up with them on that meeting. Um, so drainage, we have roof drains in the front, this part of the roof and everything in this area will go to this infiltration basin. This half of the roof will go to um, um, drains here and connect to the infiltration basin. And this, we have catch basins in the parking lot yeah. um, because what we want to do is in winter time, we're going to be able to um, drain that because we do put a little bit of snow banks and we can't put it into the infiltration area, but mm -hmm. you know, we, we'll, there'll be some banks we want to be able to drain. So we are in a zone two in this area, just like when we do the pile. Anything coming off the pavement needs to be treated to 44% before it goes into the infiltration yeah. basin. So deep sump catch bases and um, and we're grounding before we discharge to the drywall in the infiltration basin to fill oil and water separation. So yeah, that sure. gets us our 44%. And um, the infiltration basin gets us to 89% on the treatment train, which we have to be over 80%. Okay. Um, uh, similar to uh, Violet, we do put in some 
uh, dry wells just to be able to infiltrate in frozen conditions. Uh, I don't believe the vapors had that um, you know, option, but uh, we tend to do that just because of frozen conditions. Um, so that is uh, our, essentially our utility layout and our plans for utilities. Uh, landscaping. So this, but I'll never be able to read that up there. Um, so the basins will be um, lawn, so they're easily maintained mode. You can watch, you can see if sediment's building up, things of that nature. Along this side here, we've got some, we've got some silver maples, we've got some posts of dogwoods along the front, give it a little color. Mm -hmm. uh, in the back here, we've got some, Red maples, gray birches over along here, also. Um, New English folks, we've got three of those. And then in here, because this is riverfront, we're planting some native species that um, work well in the riverfront area. So we'll have in there red chokeberry, black chokeberry, red village dogwood, the juniper, blueberry, hazelnut, and ferns. So that will enhance the riverfront in the area that was degraded and gravel before um, we're picking up um, essentially from that basin that buffer area between where we grade to create the infiltration and added buffer from what's natural to that area so that's our landscaping uh, plan uh, we'll talk about erosion but we do perimeter the site with erosion control we have uh, construction entrances so that um, air excavator uh, really can knock off as much as he can before he gets on there and then later want to keep that clean and they'll sweep it as necessary. Um, I won't go into all of these details, but I want to get to the back and I hope this plan somewhat stays. And Tony, if you can raise your voice a little bit too, just for the online. Thank you. Never had anybody tell me that. I know. You can <laughs> yell at us all you want. Um, so in the final sheet of your um, package, you'll have a photometric plan. And yes. on that photometric plan, there are cut sheets for the wall packs that will be along, uh, mounted on the base of the building. And we also have the, um, and there's a couple of different um, wall packs. And then you'll see the picture unit for the poles. So these are 25 foot pole heights. We have one here, another one here in the parking area. So we have two in front yep. and we have two in back. And when you look at the, it's, the photometric plan is a bunch of numbers, okay? 0.0 sure. .0 means there's no light in those areas. As you get closer to the fixture, you're gonna see it jump 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, and then around the fixture, 3.1. Um, or whatever in those areas. So when I look at Merrigan Way, based on their analysis, mostly in Merrigan, you're gonna get 0 0.1, 0 0.2 mm -hmm. uh, along that. So that's that's light in, in on Merrigan off the building. In the infiltration basin to the west, we have no light in the basin. So that's a heck of a buffer to yeah. um, South Main Street. In this corner, because we've got three lights here into the wood area, we get 0.1. So about where that easement area is, mm -hmm. we don't cross that with anything at all for light. So that's yep. in that tree belt. On the north side, we do get 0 0.3, 0 0.1 in the basin. But once we get past the top of the burn, no light. So right. going to Coates Avenue, there won't be any light splash that way. Okay. On the east side, um, once we get out of the basin area or say where our fence is going to be, mm -hmm. we don't light splash across the fence. So right through where right our through property is, everything is like 0.1 and then it starts to build back. Yeah. So um, the electrical engineer knew the criteria of not you know, trying to splash across property lines. And I think they've done a, a fairly good there's a lot of different ways to do it. This little, so there's a lot, you know, you can, you can put in a lot of lights. Um, you can cut them a certain way. You can do a lot of different things, but this, in our opinion, meets the standard. The thing is where we have less number of poles 
um, but we have um, uh, so four of them that are 25 feet high. And the, the reason for the 25 foot high was to to meet a certain light that you needed, but not otherwise you'd have more poles. Is that you'd the have idea? To do, you'd have to do more poles. So we're trying to get in the areas of concern, like yes. the back um, or in front. You know, in the winter time, when you got shifts coming in and out. You don't. You know. You want them lit up and safe. To be somewhat yeah. lit up and safe, so they get a clear path and they can see yeah. um, to the entryway. Yeah. Where we don't really care out in the in the in the basin, so we've got you know point one, point yeah. one, point two, there's a point three. Yeah. Um, you know we're not concerned about that. Right. Um, so a pretty good job. There's a lot yeah. of different ways to solve those kinds of things. This is the method that um, the electrical engineer chose um, to get the lighting requirements from them, but also not to splash and, and have a bunch of light intrusion on on the neighbors. Okay. So that's, you know, I talked about fences, talked about lighting. Um, there was, um, we do, I think I said in the, in, in, um, on the previous, on the major site plan there that we did provide bicycle, um, bicycle, a bicycle rack in front in case employees wish to um, go to work. Um, by a bicycle that's right in the front entryway by that vestibule. Um, and if you look at this, you probably can't tell on this, but there's like a grass or a, a, a strip in here. So you got parking, curb, strip, walk, building. So in that area, if in the future they wish to um, put in um, Say maybe make maybe four EV parking stalls. Mm -hmm. They'd have the room in there between the walk and the curb to put the pedestal in. So you put gotcha. two, so you could feed four cars from yeah. there. So they have the opportunity to do that. I don't know if Derek's going to pump for that now. I have electrical have ray. Time for us to do that, but um, we have we have a lot of space for those kinds of things if mm -hmm. we wish to do it. I think that is it from a civil standpoint. Good. And so we're Thank you. available for questions. Thank yeah. You. Um, so I think um, we, we did um, have uh, have somebody kind of review it initially. And I think that we, um, I, I, I did understand that the Conservation Commission asked for a peer review um, of the project. And I think we would, we would feel comfortable with that too. And what we were going to try to do is do that together. So it's all you know, one, one entity that does that. Um, Casey, do you want to speak to that? I know you did a little bit of homework ahead of time with anticipation of this. I did. I anticipated there may be questions about peer review because initially the chair of the Conservation Commission asked if we could be prepared to address that. So what we did in the interest of time and money, we sent out requests for quotes to I think Alex can confirm, I think to five firms, we, we were received two back, one from Berkshire Design and one from Wood. And we asked them for peer review of the site plan pieces, stormwater pieces, special permit pieces, as well as conservation. And the intent was to consolidate the peer review. And we gave a timeline of 30 days. So if you look, there's a purple folder on your table there it it has a post-it note on it um, that includes both peer reviews yep. if you want to pull it out there are two different numbers i think berkshire De design was a little bit lower um, and includes meeting attendance wood didn't include meeting attendance um, so if you want to i don't know if the board wants to go forward with this but with concom going wanting to go forward they've already voted right um, and because this is a fairly substantial project, we were trying to err on the side of caution. I, I was um, I was reading the I, I read through the two you know um, uh, proposals, and it did look you know the the most economical one. I mean, they're very close to each other. I think Berkshire Design came in at six thousand six twenty. Wood came in at. Um, 7,200. However, uh, Berkshire Design offered two in-person meetings, um, whereas Wood did not. They were going to charge more for that. And 
Berkshire Design, if they had to meet again for some reason, they did have a charge for that, but they did include all of that uh, for less money and including some, you know, in-person meetings. So it seems like that would be the more most economical one. Um, and then do you, um, do we give a copy to them? As Absolutely, well? you can give them the copy. Give you both. More. I had it ready just in case this came up. Yeah. And thanks, thanks to Alex for doing those communications so that we had something to discuss. Um, I'm fine moving ahead with um, Berkshire Design mm -hmm. as a low as a lower bidder and to including two meetings. I think it's important to have meetings. Carolyn, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. I think it's important to have public meeting on this public information. Um, you know, hopefully they're going to agree with the design, Tony's design, and yeah, that's um, a good job. verify the stormwater calculations and all that. And um, but I think it's important to have a public meeting to you know find you know agree, uh, come up with their findings. So it seems like it's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at it. I don't know how you guys feel, but I mean, I'm ready to move forward with this. Me too. I, I would love to get the project yeah. uh, up and running as soon as possible. Um, we are going to also, I, I first want to take questions from the board here, and then um, we'll entertain questions from the public too. Um, we, again, we did have, um, uh, let's see, PVPC go through um, this you know, just at the initial application and, and, and you may have seen that already too. And, and so we could look at that stuff um, as well and see if there's any areas that we want to address um, as we go through the, the process. But um, would you recommend moving forward with, with the peer review? Um, I think we should do that tonight so that yeah. 30 days is already get it started, started and get it yeah. back here quick and then um are there any questions from the board on this application first before i open it up to the public i just wanted to i i, I assume that new pros in in favor of moving forward with the peer review so that uh, if there are issues that need to be engineered engineer they can be expedited and that'll in the long run make your project poss possibly move forward faster mm -hmm. um i i just glancing at PVPC's thing, I, I didn't see it until tonight, um, you know, just before our meeting. But one thing that wasn't considered and not, it's not a normal thing, but um, you are putting in some catch basins and, uh, you know, as a Pioneer Valley Mosquito District Commissioner, I would just appreciate um, part of the operational commitment for you all is to put some mosquito dunks into your catch basins during the mosquito season. Um, we do all of the town or the highway department does most of the town for a couple hundred dollars worth of mosquito discs. Mm -hmm. You just get them at Home Depot, toss them in. But it's really important when we have, you know, this summer it was very dry, but mm -hmm. in, if we had a, a July kind of weather like we did last year, it would be critical. We can also add that to our um, stormwater maintenance and operations plan, which perfect. is part of the submittal. Um, just because we'll go over that with Jeff and his crew, and um, and that's you know even if it's a condition of the permit, it'll be another place where it hits. So um, right. we're fine with that. I just wanted that. to mention it because yeah. it we're we're being very conscientious. We have had three years of no West Nile disease in the town of Deerfield because we have been treating our catch basins. So um, we're very concerned about that kind of stuff. So thank you. Great. Any other questions from the board? Um, public would, and if the public would like to speak, um, you could come on up and use a mic and state your name and where you're from and what your questions might be. Welcome. Hi, I'm Matt Woods. Uh, I'm, uh, I live on 38 Thayer Street. Uh, and we received a notice about this uh, uh, thing. My concern, which I haven't heard addressed yet, we can smell Yankee Candle some days from our street. Uh, I'm concerned about air pollution and uh, fumes uh, from a large plastics manufacturer moving in next door to us. Sure, I can quickly do that. Um, so I'm Jeffrey. I'm Jeffrey Ethier. I'm managing director and owner of New Pro. 
Um, I could welcome you over to our facility. Uh, there is no odor, very, very low noise. We're not the type of operation that even has to wear uh, ear protection mm -hmm. uh, on the machines that are running. It's a very clean operation. There's no types of exhausts, nothing that's burning any chemicals off and extinguishing them out. So we're uh, a very clean operation. Okay. Um, urethane mm -hmm. in general is a, um, a very clean product. It's not typically like plastic and PVC that does not break down um, and produces you know, phthalates and, and, and such. Um, so urethane is uh, the type of product that can be used and come in contact with skin, mm -hmm. depending on what types of applications uh, can be used for wound care dressings, as well as we, the product we make is automotive uh, applications itself. We're not really into the medical films. We have some medical products, but a very, very, very small amount. So I could welcome you over. You could, mm -hmm. you know, take a gander. I think you'd be yeah. very impressed with uh, where we are now and what the facility looks like on the inside. And plainly, this is key. Do you have filtration? Like, what what sorts of filtration you have on the outside? Like, I I researched a little bit, and it sounded like you did TPU plastic. And most of what I found was comparisons of plastics for um, 3D printing. And uh, the TPU did seem like it was one of the better ones, mm -hmm. but they're still recommending venting fumes outside and so forth, and like apply that to a large scale. Um, so we actually bring air into the building because uh -huh. it is a clean room atmosphere. So we want to have positive pressure, not to allow. If you open a door, you don't want anything a right. bug actually coming in. Right. right. Um, but there is no type of exhausts because there is no smoke. There is no odor off gassing in our process. Zero. Zero. Yeah. And, and, so right. there's no smokestack or anything like that. There's no. And, and they're close by. So if you wanted to visit, they're they're just over on Sandy Lane. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. Right, yeah. Right the next. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd be curious to visit. Sure. sure. Right. Thank you for the invite. information here. Okay. Come over. Uh, just reach out through me. Okay. Thank Great. You. Thank Perfect. you. Any other questions from the public? Oh, Bruce, come on up. Bruce St. Peter, Snowberry Circle. I really wasn't here for this, but uh, it just kind of reminded me of a previous home that we lived in. Uh, there was a large uh, company that built a mile and a half up the road. And we could tell the day they turned on all the rooftop equipment. And within three months, was not a bird anywhere around. And it took them over three years to contain some of that noise pollution. So my mm -hmm. question is, have you made provisions for noise, any rooftop units and noise pollu uh, uh, pollution at the ground level and rooftop level? For auxiliary equipment, then the AC units, AC like cooling, uh, any any kind of noise noise pollution. It's going to be prevalent, especially if you're running a 24 7 operation. Mm -hmm. Jeff, do you want me to take that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So currently, there are no rooftop units. So, as because the roof was so high, I, I didn't want to put any mechanical equipment on the room for safety reasons and maintenance reasons. Yeah. Um, their process, um, the loudest piece of equipment is just under 65 decibels at three feet away. It's fairly quiet. Again, as Jeff said in his previous comment, um, if you go by their facility and they actually have two facilities, one on Sandy Lane and one over in um, the old Deerfield Plastics, mm -hmm. you, you could go outside those facilities. And, and that was a concern with Pilot Precisions as well, being Correct. a machine shop, right? And we had yep. the same argument, come over to the facility. Um, listen, you're not going to you're not going to hear noise. Um, so I, I really don't see a concern there. Most of the HVAC in that building is either going to be a BRF system, um, which is small condensers or some sort of uh, indoor chilled water HVAC unit. We haven't really determined on which way we're going with that design yet, mm -hmm. but the process relating equipment is below the 65 decibels and, and you know, similar with the lighting issue, right? So a, a quick story about um, Pilot Precision. So we had a complaint about a light on the building at Pilot Precision from one of the neighbors. And um, I believe they reached out to the select board and they called me and I went over to their house personally. We were done with construction, right? And yeah. uh, we made the modifications in good, good effort, good faith. We're, I'm a local resident. I live in Greenfield. Um, 
we're, we're not coming to town to be this monstrosity of an operation that's going to affect your town life. We're here to be a good neighbor. If any concerns come up down the road and we have to do some sort of acoustical barriers to mitigate noise because there is concern, mm -hmm. we'll do that, right? So um, I really don't think that will be an issue. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from anybody online or? Oh, uh, we've got a couple. Um, oh, yeah. Anna Lee and Rocky. And then I saw Rocky after. Go ahead, Anna Lee. Hi, Anna Lee Wolf Cool for Mountain Road, South Deer Shield. Um, I apologize that uh, audio was a little bit difficult, so I may, my first question might be erroneous, but I wasn't sure about the um, provisions for electric vehicle charging stations. Certainly with 94 parking places, I would hope you would have a good handful of EV charging stations. Um, and then secondly, also related, Deerfield is really concerned about climate change and the disastrous effects for everyone, but especially for us and the water table. And I really hope you could reconsider the asphalt uh, for the parking and look at pervious parking um, pavement instead. Um, certainly there's big building there that can't be pervious, but if something could be done for those 94 parking spaces, that would be really great. Thank you. And I think to answer that one, she probably couldn't hear, but they are, uh, they, they do have some spaces ready for EV chargers and they're going to duct it in. They just uh, haven't put the chargers in yet, but they will be ready to go if, if the need arises or the want arises. Uh, Rocky, welcome. Hi, Rocky Poli, South Main Street. I'm just really concerned more on like where the loading dock is and the back of the property going up to the brook. I know you're going to do a little more uh, landscaping, uh, but I'm hoping you put in more like evergreen type trees. Uh, so we'll have year round blockage. What happens is like with pilot and everything like that. Yes, they lower the lights and everything like that, but fall comes, winter comes, there's no leaves. The light still shines through. So we're, I'm just hoping that you will uh, instead of putting in more evergreens along the Thank you. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. He's right, right behind that, right on South Main. Okay. So, Kathy, welcome. Kathy, both Kathy's have. Uh, Kathy Sylvester first, and then Madroba right after. Yeah, I, I'm glad to hear that you're thinking of the EV stations. That's really important to me. And, and I would reiterate what uh, Annalise said about the pervious pavement where you can just to try to help mitigate um, just our water table concerns in our town. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Kathy Wittroba. Oh, Kathy, I think you're, you're yep. oh, you're muted. Yep, there you go. I'm well, back. Um, so I live at 18th Air Street and um, you, uh, this is a large building I'm curious about um, if there's 24 seven shifts, is there a cutoff for trucks or deliveries coming in and out of that area? Yes, I think they said seven, seven to seven. To se seven to seven. seven. Okay. Yeah. No seven. deliveries. No, <laughs> no deliveries after seven at night and no deliveries before seven in the morning. So thank you. So my next question is, I'm curious what a fire pump room is because I'm, I, I, this is flammable material. And um, what we just heard was that part of this building does not have access to a fire truck. And um, so I'm a little concerned about how that type of combustion is controlled and contained and what are the safety measures in the event that there's a problem. Sure, great question. So. Um... The, fi the fire pump is, is due to the height of the building. We have great street pressure. Um, the fire pump, we, we have racking in the building with products stored. Um, the building is a non-combustible construction. So in, in the building code, it, it basically is built out of all metal. There's no combustible materials in the building itself. So, you know, it's, there's not many opportunities for fires to occur within the building. Now, the racking where we store a product and a lot of that product is stored in cardboard, right? So. Um, we meet NFPA requirements. Um, 
We have in rack sprinklers at the mid height, which we put in to, to deal with any fires that might occur in the racks themselves, but everything is designed to meet NFPA standards. And if you don't know what NFPA, not National Fire Protection Agency, so um, that's the code we abide by. Um, also, um, New Pro's insurance company had some more stringent requirements with EFSR heads. Um, so we incorporated their requirements to meet the insurance requirements. So the building is very safe. Thank you. I have one more question. Sure. Um, so what 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 is involved in the construction and, and, and how long do you foresee the construction lasting? Sure, another good question. So yes. um, <laughs> depending on when we break ground, um, I, I anticipate Jeff being in the building by April, 2024. So about a year and a half. Um, that would be operating in that facility, right? So the construction will be about a year and a half. You know, you'll start, you'll see us start with uh, simple erosion controls and start pushing dirt. The first thing that happens is the foundations go in the ground. The building is slated to arrive uh, end of January, mid January, at which point we probably have a good three months of steel erection. You'll see some cranes on site. The building will go up. It will be weather tight by summer, at which point we'll start pouring the floors, building internal offices and pushing the building through. Um, so by the winter, we're ready um, to fire up the heat. Um, the biggest, you know, um, the electrical, everything, we can't do any mechanical or electrical until the building's weather tight and the roof is on. And I, I anticipate that being mid summer of 2023. So, so is there uh, something in place to mitigate like dust and wind and, uh, you know, I, I know what that field is like there at back there. It, it's just dry and, and dusty. And, and, you know, when the town garage was built, all of our homes were had just this layer of film in them all the time. And I'm just kind of curious how, what measures are being put into place to mitigate that. Yeah, so that's another great question. So um, typically on a project this large, there'll be some sort of water buffalo or water truck on the site. As mm -hmm. we start getting drying conditions, the site contractor will be responsible for wetting down the site to prevent it. There are other options like calcium fluoride mm -hmm. that you can put down, but we try to, to stray away from like chemical treatment, even though they're perfectly yeah. safe. I would prefer the water method. And, um, you know, I've been building buildings and bridges for 15 years. And that's one point that I always emphasize dust control is important because when I'm working on site and I will be there on site, I don't want to be breathing in dust all day and going home with a stuffy nose, right? So mm -hmm. we will take appropriate measures to keep the site and dust down. If there's ever a complaint, um, you know, I'll have a construction trailer on site uh, right next to Jewett Ave. You're more than welcome to pop in and voice your concerns. Myself or a superintendent will be there um, and we'll take care of it. So just my last question, there's a customer entrance, like what, I'm trying to figure out the nature of the business. Like, is this manufacturing? Is there some retail component? Who who are these customers that are coming in and parking? I'm just curious what that means. It, it's more of a, uh, if customers come and visit us, uh, we may have uh, quarterly meetings with customers. Okay. We do supply the globe. We are a global okay. supplier mm -hmm. of uh, the films that we do produce. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, since COVID has had hit, we have not had one supplier, one customer in. So the uh, customers are basically clients. They're potential purchasers of your product. Yeah. And we, yeah. we have a very limited amount of um, sure. customers. So we have less than 20. Yeah. I was just trying to think, I was trying to get a construct of the business and its operation. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You did a great job. Thank you. Great questions, Kathy. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Oh, we have a question in the audience. Yes, please come on up and state your name. And just hit the uh, hit the microphone. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm Erica Franks at Forty Thayer Street. Thank you. There's a little bit of a young people on the other side of the privacy fence in the park. It apparently is an issue, and I was told today by the lady at the police station that actually this has been an ongoing thing. I've just been aware of it. I got a little sprite a week or two ago. So I, I just hope you guys would think about security. And I was thinking since you're 24-7 that you will probably
we have security people on site 24 7 and maybe this will kind of take care of some of these issues this issue but also if you're going to be building for two years are you going to have security there all the time because otherwise it doesn't sound safe sure so um during the construction phase there will be temporary protection so um the whole site will be enclosed with temporary six foot fencing around the whole perimeter those posts around uh let me just pull up a site plan here so i can kind of explain what the plan is Explain it. I'm just going to turn the mic. So, can everybody hear me okay at home? Yes. Raise up. So, um, similar to the fencing we're installing permanently during the construction phase, there will be uh, driven fence posts, temporary fence posts along the whole perimeter of the top property with temporary fence panels that are laid with sandbags. They're all bolted together with uh, five eight, uh, three eighths anchors. So all those panels are bolted, but the reason why we use the removable on the front is for access for ourselves. So if we have to get something big, it, we can unbolt them. Um, it's pretty commonplace. Um, in most construction have fencing with some sort of screening on it along the road. I do have fence screen that kind of blocks the view from people going in. Now, the second part of that question was during operation, right? So when they open up their, their facility, one, we will have permanent fence and gates along this section to keep people from getting into the loading dock area. And we also are installing security cameras around the building. Um, those security cameras will be able to be uh, looked at online by the client himself. But as far as full-time security, no, we won't have a security guard sitting there that will get pretty costly for the duration of the project and it's not industry practice. Is this related to, to Bayer Street? So Bayer Street? Bay Bayer Street is behind Pilot Precision. So this is yeah, Bayer this Street. Is Pilot, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That's in my house. And I, Trevor, we can't hear anything. Yes, I know. Okay. I'll, I'll repeat I that. I was just asking where the building was in connection with my house. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm a little concerned about this. And also, and, I, and this is probably a separate matter, whoever it is that practices their golf shots back there. <laughs> and the last one I found, which was last week, was the golf ball was 10 feet from my sliding glass doors. Yep. So I, 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 it's not exactly about you all. I don't right. have an issue. I just I, feel like security could be yep. um, something I think, we think about. And just to repeat uh, her, her <clears throat> statements is that she's concerned about security on the property during construction, how it's been over the last few years. I mean, this is really one of the major things that we're excited about is that a, that a, a vacant lot that has been a spot for kids to skateboard. It's been a, you know, it's been a lot as, as any kids growing up, you always find the vacant lot and have a good time out there, but it'll be nice to have a, a wonderful, beautiful building bringing uh, really important jobs to our, to our region. And uh, you know, that whole property will now be uh, with our town garage pilot and, and new pro will be finally, uh, finished out and with it secured with fencing and lighting and you know ac it activity is, back and forth you're not going to see the you know the kids around as much as um it is know, a it degraded is site so yeah um it, you know during the dry conditions we had this summer it, you know there probably was a lot of dust and stuff mm -hmm. coming off that site so yeah, it'll make a big, big it'll make a difference developed. to have this cleaned up and built any other questions so I think we would um, we would make a motion to uh, continue the hearing, and I don't know, if, Casey. Do we have a date? Are we just going to wait to give a date, or do we need a date certain when we continue it? Because we have to wait for the peer review, correct? So if the board wants to do peer review, yep. um, in conjunction with Concom's request, based on the quotes that we've received, I think. There was more inclination to utilize uh, Berkshire design. Yeah. So before folks leave, we need to make sure that they have a copy of that. Yep, we did. Provide but one. what we would want to do is pick a date certain that gets us through the 30 day period and the town would sign a contract to for that peer review work. We need the money to come into the town to pay for the peer review from the applicant. And once the money's there, we move forward and get the peer review done. The sooner we get that money for the peer review into a separate account to start, the sooner we can get this done. So I would suggest that we do 
a continuation that gets us at least a couple days past that 30 days, just so um, Jeff okay. and Derek and their team have a chance to get the check cut. Well, that would be November 2nd. Second. I think November 2nd is the next select board meeting that's near that time frame. 28th. And um, if anything gets done before that, we could we could look at it. But I think that would get us. I mean, the sooner we get the check to get I think contracted, yep. get the review done, if we could speed it up, we would. But um, we could we could we if we continue it now to November 2nd, we can't if we get the report earlier, we can't make it earlier. Right, Casey? No, you have to continue to a date and time certain. OK. I think it's safer to do the November 2nd then. Mm -hmm. October 2nd is exactly 30 days or? It's, uh, I think it's, be, well, today's what, the 28th, 28th. Right? 28th. So let me count that out. I think it's uh, one, two, three, four. I'm, I'm just asking because I know the Conservation Commission has a meeting the last Thursday of October. And if that hits the 30 days, could we do a joint hearing? It's the 26th. Um, they, they usually do it on the 27th. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think they're going to do their some would be on the 27th, but that won't be 30 days. Okay. Um, but yeah, we could, I mean, it could be done by then anyways. Right. I mean, hopefully, um, oh, go ahead. yeah. Um, Tony, I, I would just suggest that, um, maybe the board instruct Casey or ho however we do that. Um, I can't speak for you guys, but we've been through number of peer reviews mm -hmm. working with a peer reviewer. So I would hope it would be, Advent, well, in my opinion, it would be advantageous that when they're signed up and ready to go, they start doing their initial review. And if things come up that they're, it's okay for them to talk to us so that we can get yes. rid of little things. And so that when that meeting happens, I mean, they have a letter written and yep. we've either satisfied their comments um, and they're okay, or yep. We're here at the board jointly discussing our differences if we do yes. have them and we can get a judgment made on Resolve. that because there's a lot of different ways to do engineering. I just want to tell you for that, sure. but um, it's worked beneficial for me in the past to be able to have that back and forth with them. So, um, you know, it's exactly. big issues and not little things that we're answering, right. say, two pages of, you know, this invert doesn't match that in, you know, right. stuff like that. Yep. Okay. So yeah, well, that, hopefully that attention. is acceptable um, to the board and, and conservation. Yeah, Casey's nodding. That would, that would be our intent. Okay. Um, and we recently went through this. So that was a, actually a town project. So we got schooled. <laughs> so that would be our intent. Yes. Yep. That sounds good to me. So so it sounds like we need to make a motion to authorize Casey yes. to um, mm -hmm. offer um, a peer review contract to Berkshire Design Group if that's Mm -hmm. If that's what we intend, then I so move. I second. second. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Great. And I would second the motion to authorize uh, the design group to uh, speak with um, the design team for the applicant on any major issues that would come up so that they can try to uh, respond to these things in a timely fashion. And, Again, help this expedited project move forward. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Um, so the next question is, do you feel, do you want to do it on the 27th or do you want to wait to do it on the on November 2nd? Um, well, 27th the 27th is there. Uh, I can't do it the 27th, but I could do it um, the 2nd. OK. I don't have, I, I got something going on the 27th, but. Oh, uh, for yes. It's possible that the NOI portion of this, uh, if, if um, the Berkshire Design's finished with the NOI portion, that, that's not in our purview. And, and, and they could probably resolve those situations on, on the 27th. And then when they came to us, the NOI would be off the table and we would respond to the things that we're responsible for. And that's our intention and hopefully it works that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would okay. be fine. Yeah. Great. Then when let's set it up to continue okay. till November 2nd. I'll entertain a motion for that. Make, make a motion to uh, reconvene the public hearing at uh, November 2nd at 615. Sounds good. 
Oh, I'll second that. All those, uh, any other questions or comments? No. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your information. Thank you, audience, for your great questions. Um, perfect. Well, have a great evening. So, moving on. So, uh, do we have any select board announcements or um, board of health announcements? Or? I, I just wanted to mention that um, thank John Pachork for updating our um, comprehensive emergency management plan. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did read it. I also <laughs> reviewed it. Um, we're just going to add a little bit of a section for the um, public health because of um, the pandemic. So, you know, some of the, our experience with the pandemic. So Alex and I are just going to put a little um, appendix in there for our use. Okay. It won't officially be required, but and then we're going to send it to NATO, which is where we got our little grant from mm -hmm. to have some, you know, some more procedures for the pandemic kind of issues. Um, so I wanted to thank John on that. And we'll add up, uh, you know, send you the appendix or include the appendix to you both when so we, we can finish it. Okay. Um, doing it up. Uh, that's one of the things that we were working with NATO on. And then at some point we'll have to bring it before the board and sign it, right? There was all these signatures. Yeah. Well. Yep. Um, and then I just want to say it, it looks like now there's going to be no issues with hurricane um, coming up, but it, you know it should be here over the weekend. And it doesn't look like it's going to the track is anywhere that we have to concern. But we will be watching it because Tim you and I will know. be able to be out of town next week. But yep. we'll be here watching it and. If there is any concerns, I'll certainly call you, Trevor, I'm before sure. I leave town. I'll be watching the river yeah. for you. <laughs> Just yep. make sure someone's watching the rivers. Yep. And um, but people should realize that you know there the potentially is more hurricanes for another you know few weeks. So. Yep. <sighs> Just, you know, have your to-go bag or be prepared, that's all. If there was a lot of flooding. Because mm -hmm. flooding is really what our issues are. Any other items to discuss? We have, um, we have a... a oh, the, for the Board flu, of Health. Flu clinic. Yeah, for Board of Health, COVID is still a threat. Bruce is right here. I had a conversation with him this week. <laughs> um, it, it really is an ongoing threat. We, um, people need to keep their vaccinations up to date. Uh, we are having two clinics. We're having a flu high dose clinic at the church for the seniors um, on Friday morning. And then in the afternoon we're doing, we have um, a COVID clinic at the Deerfield Elementary School three to seven. Um, we time. have over 200 people signed up, which is wonderful. Um, keep signing up. And uh, so that we can make sure we have all the choices and we have enough vaccinators. We will have Pfizer, we will have Moderna, bivariants. Um, the Pfizer is 12 and over. The Moderna is 18 and over. Um, we'll have the new um, Novax kind of vaccine. It's the primary vaccine. And also um, any of the regular uh, COVID, Pfizer, Moderna. If you want Johnson & Johnson, you have to request it when you sign up because we don't um, normally have that when we when yeah. they come. So um, please sign up, continue to sign up. Uh, we have a really a lot of interest in the bivariant. You can get a flu shot in one arm because that's the traditional egg-based um, vaccine. And then you can get the bivariant in the other arm because that is the new and RNA based vaccine. I did it myself. I am still here tonight. So I'm still upright in the chair. Yes. So, so um, you can do <laughs> both. So you can get your high dose in the morning and then come get your um, bivariant in the afternoon. Okay. So just to, just to clarify, um, that's this Friday, September thirtieth. Thank you. Yes. Oh, Tim. Thank you. Yes, this Friday. Didn't I say that? I'm sorry. You I didn't did say Friday, but I just yes, wanted to it's know this Friday, the third. Two days from now. Two yes. days from now. But it is it is really serious. I don't want to go on and on, but we've had 
higher um, hospitalization rates, and they're, you know, it's been consistent, a couple deaths a, a week in the county. So please get protected. Okay, um, we've got a lot on our plate tonight, so let's keep rolling on. Uh, discussion, oh, minutes, we don't have minutes tonight, correct? I don't, I didn't see any. Nope. Okay, good. Um, so discussion items. So acting as sewer commissioners, the sewer bylaw, Amendment proposal, home, room peti home rule petition, special acts in 1935, Act 343, uh, review and approval regulations. So um, I wanted to, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about this a little bit. I've been thinking about and listening to some comments about what we're doing. And I wanted to recommend a separate different way about going about, or just have a discussion about the act um let me find it here i you know i um i had bruce had a couple comments to trevor that i thought would um be helpful to clarify to people some questions we mm -hmm. had talked about it on the phone and um i felt that if bruce had made his comments and we answered his comments it would be very helpful Oh, you want to something. take his comment first, you mean? Oh, I, I'm happy to do that. Bruce, did you want to? You have a comment? I know we had talked about your concerns, but um, if you okay. had your, talked about your concerns, then maybe um, um, it would be easier for Trevor to address them. And we're, we're just addressing the amendments right now. I'm going to start, yeah, with the acts, right? And I think. Um, well, I'll let you start, and then I've got a comment on uh, an idea that I have to do with that. But go ahead. I, I'm trying to find that. Do we have yeah. the act in Art here? Article 16, if you've got the warrant. It's yeah, in the I'm sure. It's in the special town meeting warrant. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Bruce St. Peter's, Snowberry Circle. Um, I guess I'm a little concerned. My main concern is the deletion or addition of um, bypassing the Acts 1935 uh, requiring um, hearings for this and allowing the, the Acts to be amended, the percentage, the 25, 75%, by the select board with no other inter intervention or coordination. And I'm not pointing fingers at this board or any other board, but somewhere down the road right now, we have a board that no one is on septic. Uh, somewhere down the road, you could have a board that all are on septic, uh, all around town sewer. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of leaves open a whole new thing. Uh, so the conversations I've had with Carol, I understand where this is going. And I do, so I can appreciate that. However, I'm a little leery about just allowing the select board or sewer commissioners to have that right at any point in time to decide how much or how little the users are gonna pay. And right now, of course, is this 25, 75 uh, uh, split. Uh, the users pay uh, 75, but we also pay part and parcel of 25 too. And I don't know how to do the math without a lot of data, but it, you know, I've been told it would probably come out to be more like an 85-15 when you really get down to the split. Uh, I guess my concern, and as I said, I know where what is trying to be done with this, but I would have to see a lot of math to see whether that is really worthwhile, whether it be shooting herself in the foot, the town is uh, on, on, in the short period of time, is against a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, I think that really needs a lot of thought before this ever goes through. Uh, Can I address that? Yes. Because I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of the act and its implications. These things only come up when you're, when you're doing a sewer project like the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. Right. And it requires a borrowing uh, authorization by town meeting vote. And as part of that, you decide, okay, in this instance, there is a 10% benefit to the town in general, and there's 
a 90% benefit to the, uh, the people who are on this thing, that would be explained. It has to go to the town meeting. It's part of the public transparency discussion process. Um, the act itself didn't authorize the town to, to expend any money beyond $180,000 and it still required them to go and, and get approval. And so in the same way that we're now discussing the old Deerfield wastewater treatment facility um, repair, um, this change of the act would not affect what's already gone before, neither would the bylaw adoption affect what's gone before. It wouldn't change the percentages of what would what would be required to deal with the South Deerfield plant if these things if these changes were were um, were agreed to at the special town meeting or at a subsequent town meeting, they would affect any decisions we made on a sub subsequent sewer project, sewer specific. It's not about roads. It's not about anything right. other than the sewer. It would all still go to an annual town meeting or a special town meeting vote, so voters could decide whether the percentages made sense. And uh, so I, I think that that's, that's my fundamental understanding. This, this is not going to allow us to make any decision unilaterally. It's going to end up in the hands of the voters. Is that your, your understanding, Casey? It is, because you have to define these in the manner that Tim described. Whenever there's a project that comes up, there's a lot of background that goes on and development of the question and you know, just the explanations of the projects. That question will come up, that question will be answered. Bruce, so as I explained it to you, I think Tim has gone over it fairly clearly. And, and I explained to you, we needed some flexibility for future projects. Whatever the 25% is, whatever is done for South Deerfield is done. Right. This I, is not changing the 25, 75, for anything related to South Deerfield right now, okay? Right, nothing. and, and, and I, understand, nothing, I understand that part. And, and yep. because we have to borrow the money, the town has to approve it, you know, for a project. So it, say we did a 0% or 10% rather than a 25-75, and we had to borrow money, the town has to still approve that borrowing we, we, even if at whatever number, so we have to justify anything. Right, I understand that, but who, who determines the uh, percentage the benefit for the town is against the town? And well, the, it, the, 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 the sewer commission, what the sewer commissioners would do was would come up to the, with the percentage justification, like I told you, say like 10%. Right. And then we go to the voters and we say, we're justifying this as 10% or 0% or whatever. And then the voters vote. We can't, we can't expend any money unless we have the voters approve the, the borrowing. And to address the question, too, but I think you're asking, um, obviously, we're not engineering experts, we're right? Probably, you know, probably not financial experts. So in order to determine what is what is a a benefit to this improvement in a in a town um, infrastructure project to the general population versus to a specific population, we would be talking to a, a, a sewer engineering firm like DPC, which somebody is somebody like DPC, right? It, we wouldn't be making this decision without gathering information and um, perhaps even seeking a second opinion. Um, and then once we understood what percentage of the project would be of general versus specific benefit, then we could determine to make, well, really it's, it should be 35% general and it should be, you know, 65% um, specific. I, this opens it up to, to going either way. It doesn't lock us into something because yeah. one of the things that I noted in, in the uh, previous uh, discussions and, and votes on this issue was many people who are on septic said, you know, why should I be on the hook for this at all? Right. Um, of course, they were overlooking the fact that there are businesses in town, those businesses use the sewer system. There is a direct benefit because those businesses wouldn't be here if they didn't have a sewer, they wouldn't be paying real estate taxes, et cetera. So um, we have to be Schools. cognizant of, of that. But, um, uh, you know, so I, 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 I think it could go either way, uh, but if you specify a figure then you're locked into it. My, 
Cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no. That's fine. So my thought on this a little bit, hearing hearing it, um, you know, I think people's concern is that, well, you could do anything, you know, that any sewer commissioners 40 years in the future could decide to make it 60% or 50% or 50% and there really isn't any guardrail other than I assume, yes, town meeting would then have to vote and then obviously there'd be a debt exclusion vote on that. So there is some town meeting um, say in, in how that happens. And my one thought I had was to alleviate that concern would be to say the town would pay, um, could pay up to say 20% and never pay more than 20%. Um, and that way you have a, you have a, a break on it. And then, you know, so we could choose nothing or we could choose up and I'm, I don't, I'm not picking a number now, but up say 20, 25% or 10% or 5%, but you'd have that cap at the bottom. So we could pay, you know, up to 20% unless we feel like there are some times that we would want to pay more than that. I'm not sure. Would we ever? Um, well, the the, most, your the statement's a little backwards then, isn't it? You're saying up to 20%, but maybe you want to pay more. No, no. What I'm saying, what my, my thought is, if you said in these acts that, you know, to alleviate that concern of people thinking that some, not us, but some miraculously cabal in the future might say, we're, we want the town to pay 50% of this bill. Mm -hmm. um, one option would be to say the town... Um, instead of saying 25 and 75 says the town has the ability to pay up to 20% and no more. And that way you have a lock on that lower part, whether it's 10%, 5% or 20%. Um, and that way um, the, the town would always have a buy-in because I think as everybody agrees or not everybody, but I think the majority of people who really think about this understand that we would not have a town without having um, a sewer system, we wouldn't have industry, wouldn't have houses close to each schools. other. You can't fit that many schools. You can't fit built, you know, you don't have enough septic system right. room exactly. for all that. You wouldn't have right. a growth or, or, you know, to be doing smart development of senior housing and that kind of thing. You wouldn't be able to do any of that if you didn't have a, a sewer system. So there is a benefit to the town. And again, I don't know the dollar amount or the percentage amount, but if it is 20%, you know, and we put a cap there that the town could only um, participate up to that, it would allow people that nervousness of, oh, in the future, somebody could charge anything they wanted um, to the to the general versus the, the users. But maybe the, that's- The, the idea is to have flexibility, Bruce. Yeah, well, I, I, I just want the a definite assurance that it would be done through a, a professional consulting firm. Of course, yeah. I and, mean, we're not- And, and, I don't and know through no, no other way. You know, that's what I would be more concerned about. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the, the beauty of our system is it requires people at town meeting to authorize expenditures. Yeah. Okay. They're not going to authorize an expenditure if they don't think it's fair. And um, so or the arg our argument is, is good. We have to have an argument that's good. That people will support and and ultimately right. too. I mean, if you if you and I, I I'm not suggesting that I don't think that what Trevor's suggesting is is a possibility, mm -hmm. but the thing I see with that is that um, somebody else is going to come forward and say, well, I don't think I'll ever I'm never going to be on a, on the sewer system, and I don't think I should have to pay right. up to twenty percent of this. So you put it in, you get criticized, you take it out, you get criticized, and. And I think I think that without any language that specifies anything, it allows the voters to decide that the plan that the uh, sewer commissioners of 40 years from now bring forward either makes sense or it doesn't make sense. Um, if you say in the future that um, you're you're going to have to, well, I mean the way he's suggesting it, it could be up to 20 percent, right. so it would still give us. Yeah. Um, some, some flexibility. So that's why I said I didn't rule it out. Right. I'm just saying yeah. that you add language in that talks about a percentage and it raises the same question in reverse that you're yeah. raising tonight. Right. So, um, and then if you, if you try to anticipate every question that someone's going to have and say, well, this will only be possible because we're going to get professional engineering, oh, you, you know, yeah. uh, as you know, that's the bylaw or right yeah. regulation, yeah. it can, you, it, it can be a rabbit's hole. Right. Yep. You want to so, leave it vague, so. Um, and Casey seems to have her hand up and I, oh, go ahead. She 
Mr. Chair, through you. Bruce, we're going to hold a hearing in three weeks that will include both the sewer bylaw and the acts. Okay. Yeah, so yeah we we're definitely going to do that. All right. So, all right. Then I, I guess I, you know, the comment is there is a lot of typos in here. I assume there'll be. Oh, cool. yeah. yeah. No, because <laughs> it, 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 a lot of work to do. select boards is two, two words rather than one. And well, is that one in the bylaw specifically, or is that one in the uh, the acts? And there's a reason because yeah. the legislature requires certain formatting, uh, versus us, Ver yes, they and they will change it if they don't like it. So, what council's already done is put it into a format that's acceptable generally to the legislature when they begin review. Well, I'm, I'm just saying in a lot of the articles, not just this one. It's yeah, a, no, I'm you know, sure. Uh, uh, that. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the town meeting articles? Yeah, well, uh, multiple uh, multiple places. There's inconsistency with spelling the like board. So. No, but no, that, yes, I I'm, I'm, I'm asking, it's not specific to the sewer stuff. It's, oh. it's to the whole thing? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, uh, yes, I, and I do understand uh, that, but I think that you probably help her a lot with this explanation, um, especially with the number of people in here right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Bruce, do you feel like we answered your question pretty good now? Some of them, but I wait to see other people's questions at the, you know, at, at the, the hearing. hearing. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah. yeah. All right. And I, I think, you know, I, I, you did clear up uh, one, uh, you know, as to how the percentages would be determined. It wouldn't be just a cabal of. Okay. Because on the surface, it looks like, you know, the select board is going to be in charge and that's all there is to it. And the users are not going to have a whole lot of say, uh, but uh, I, I, Bruce, just, you uh, always have you always have town meetings. And just though, yes, okay. So uh, I guess one other question, is one quick on the mm -hmm. on, on the bylaw one fifty seven. I guess I'm a little concerned with 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 the way that is written because the way I'm reading it, a rule can override the bylaw. I'm going to find that. And, what, what number was that? This again? a one one fifth section one fifty dash seven interpretation. One dash seven interpretation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the last sentence says, "Whenever any regulations made under the authority hereof differ from those prescribed by any bylaw or other regulations, the provision which imposes the greater restriction or higher standard shall govern." So that's basically saying a rule can override the bylaw. Well, what basically what it's saying is that regulations can be done without going through um, sending this to the attorney general. Right. So if the state says you have to change a code and the code is more stringent, um, I don't think that the bylaw actually says anything about, you know, um, the, the de defining a specific hookup, for instance. No, no, and no. So no, no, no. what it's saying is that if we changed our regulation and the regulation is more stringent, perhaps it agrees with the state that the regulation will will not trump the bylaw. Well, I'm I'm reading it that this the regulation would trump the bylaw, and that's what I'm no, I, that's what I'm sorry, I said it wrong. You know, that, that's what the term the more I, stringent thing would 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 lead. So it's for instance. I think it says it both ways, right? If the bylaw is more stringent, then it yes, is. and but they're if saying the regulation is more stringent, then they're saying that overrides a bylaw. And I don't think that that, would yeah, but that is always the true though for public health. You if the state, state, if the state public health code is stricter than our bylaw, it goes by the public health. Okay, so the it comes state, out of public, public, public health. Right, right. Yeah. the state always has, but if our bylaw is stricter then it, it, it also is trumps it because um, we are local authority. Okay, so, Casey, Casey has her hand up. So there's two elements, this Bruce, that, you, that we need to think about. The bylaw creates the structure by which the sewer system may be governed. The regulations are the ar operational enforcement arm. So the regulations could conceivably be more strict but the intent with regulations is to be able to um, pivot if there's a problem and make a change or see something come down the road and address it before it's a problem. A bylaw is, it doesn't necessarily have that fluidity. So councils recommended the process we're talking about right now. We need modernization of the act, a sewer bylaw that 
is clear. And then the next step would be to promulgate res regulations after it's approved and goes to review by the AG's office. And those regulations, we already have a draft, but those regulations would be created for the actual management of the system, the actual operations. And conceivably, that could be more restrictive than the bylaw. The intent is to be able to operate the system with fluidity under, under the umbrella of the bylaw. And, and just so you know that the regulations that we're talking about would be, um, again, reviewed by DPC or some other consultant. Yes. And the reason why that it's separated like this is so we get a regulation in place, then the building department or whatever, whatever, whatever enforcement agency is in charge of this has clear, okay, right. what you've designed here does not meet our regulation codes. And so you need to change them. Right. And then there's no argument right. um, because sometimes there can be ambiguity. And right. um, so that's, that's the intent of this. And if you have some suggestion that, that if, might improve that process, um, if as long as it's still under the bylaw and it's not a change to bylaw, you know, I understand it. Yes. Um, one other comment, and you definitely do need to get the bylaws passed because, mm -hmm. based on past things, um, and it was a statement made that we have bylaws for this and we really don't. We have one, it's 150.1 is the only thing that I see on our town website and, and that has anything to do with the sewer bylaw. And that has and that has been determined invalid. Yeah. Right. Okay. 236 is questionable. Right. And then that, that is rules and regulations. It is not by law. Right. 239 is rules and regulations. Uh, and that was, uh, that's uh, septic systems, which would normally would come under Board of Health anyway. Right. It's that's why we're trying to clean it up. Right. And the yeah. 236 is the questionable one. Yeah. So, and, uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, thank you all Thanks. for your explanation. I think it'll help. And if nothing else, maybe get other people thinking yeah. or some other questions. And that's well, what this is all about. I, thank and you, thank you Casey. I, thank I, Mr. Chair, through you, can I answer a question that just came up? Oh, sure. um, Lisa and I are aware of the issue with 236, but first, the sewer commissioners have to promulgate regulation and rescind what's in 236 because it's actually promulgated under the wrong board right in this case this should be the sewer commissioners That's what and so there, there's a there's a remedy that has to happen there too bruce you'll have a chance to speak to it i think yeah, yeah. yeah i don't want to get into it driving right at now. home yeah but yeah. i appreciate bruce, it thank Suddenly. you because you know we had that conversation and i felt like your questions were very valid mm -hmm. and i appreciate you coming again so that we could explain it and and try to clarify it for you because okay. you know and me and thank you. right well thank i'm you still struggling and i did with sign it. up for friday to... afternoon by the way oh thank you thank you <laughs> well you can have whatever for okay. moderna or pfizer Those <laughs> yeah. both will keep you safe i'm looking for the moderna with the variant or whatever yeah, yeah bivalent. the bivalent oh, the bivalent yeah. I think the, the, thank, thank, you. You. thank you the only thing for Thanks, me Bruce. that i've been struggling with is is that is that percentage for the town and I um, I don't know what the right answer is but I'm, I'm glad we'll have a hearing on it we'll talk about it we'll come up, I'm sure with all the great minds we'll come up with something great. Trevor okay. I think we should pose that to council I'm trying to see if I can get council to come to the 19th she may okay. only have about 30 minutes that's fine but that's fine that helpful. would answer that question yeah just to kind of see if yeah just figure out what's what's the best way to do that i think it's just really critical depending on what we're doing to have the flexibility and i'm not so sure we would have you know for me i think about that vote in 2019 would we have passed it if we didn't have buy-in from the town and there was there was complaints both for and against you had you had users that kind of felt like great we've got some support in this because it's not all on our shoulders and and then you had, you know, pushback from residents who aren't on the system that were like, look, you know, why should I pay anything? And um, so I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, psychologically, I don't know where the right answer is, but I just kind of feel like if we hash that out, we'll get to the right answer. So it's good work I'm all the way around. So. You know that what I had explained to you. So thank you, Bruce. So, great. great. And we'll move the meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so we're not going to address anything else tonight on those items, correct? 
We're waiting for what you have to do is you have to look at the sewer bylaw and approve the language because there's some or there's some things that were struck by DPC after a conversation. Do we need to um, do that tonight? It's in your packet. No, I know. Do we it's need separate. To? It is not in the special town meeting warrant because right. I have to have language to publish in anticipation of a hearing. Okay. So you are saying yes, they need to do it tonight. You do need to settle on the language. You'll note that there's a couple of, of areas that are stricken because the conversation with council and DPC indicated there were changes DPC recommended. Yeah, um, I think um, I I just want to point out that there are two there are two areas. Um, one is at the the sort of the, the bottom of the first page of the sewer bylaw. There's a one fifty point three point one, and there are two options. And I wanted to ask a question. Um, the one that's in yellow, that's got an or before it, is significantly shorter, and um, it seems to me that that one would be the one that I would favor. Um, and, and then the, the things that DPC was asked to weigh in on was the, the stuff that was labeled option to add following should review with engineers. Right. If correct me if I'm wrong, Casey, but DPC, the engineering firm that we asked to review this, um, said that we should not try to define a betterment too specifically because uh, there there may be different ways to calculate it in the future. That's all referenced in the statute. That was what they said yeah. was uh, refer to the statute because the options exist in the statute. Right. And so if the, if in future the statute changes, we wouldn't have to be responding to that by changing our body. Exactly. So I was in favor of everything that DPC said about that as well. Yeah, that seemed to make sense. And other than typos, which I think we can fix. Uh, oh yeah, I can I can do acceptances of the track changes. What I wanted you to see was the were those things that were addressed by DPC. So the strike in one fifty ten point four point three, which is a strike that that Justin Skelly made after conversations with David and Lisa. And then to your point about section 150-3.1 versus 150 the other option for 150-3.1, the second option, you can always go back and change this, um, but identifying the district. I was wanted to know if Tim, Tim, just to clarify, you were supporting the yellow? Yes. 150-3.1? Yes. At the top of the second page. Right. There's. Okay. The, I was. I am supporting of that as well. Um. I was confused. On. So are we dropping? Yes, I believe. One fifty ten point four point one. Hang on a second. I mean, Can we hold on. I'm scrolling. Do you want me to share my screen? Hang on a second. Let's deal with one fifty three three point one. Let's go with that first. Before we go anywhere. Yeah. So we got to choose between the green or the yellow. Is I think right? the yellow. I was supportive of the yellow. I, I correct me. You tell tell us what's correct here. If we take the or, which is in yellow, yep, mm -hmm. it replaces the whole language of one fifty point three point one. Correct. Which begins Beforehand. with Deerfield Seward District. That's right. Dash. That's right. So it, that whole thing just disappears. Yes, the first yes. one is disappeared. The first one disappears, and you keep the language that has the yellow highlight. That's right. I'm I'm in favor of that as well. Okay, so we are all have. Do we want? Do you want to vote on that, or you just want the consensus that we all want one fifty? The second option highlighted in yellow. Yeah. Yes. 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 You want me to share screen so you can see this? If no. You, well. No. No, you don't need because to. what I would do right now, if you tell me that that's what you want to do, then the yeah. first version of that that has the green highlights, I would delete and I would delete the or yep. and we would have the 150 dash 3.1 
Put it, it on. Says, Deerfield Sewer Districts hyphen the Board of Sewer Commissioners may divide the town into separate sewer districts, but only upon prior approval by the town meeting. Until such time, there shall be one sewer district within the town. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. I, uh, we all have consensus on that. I hear consensus from all three of you. Yes. 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 Okay. I did catch the Board of Selectmen Select Board issue, so I did a strike through replacement, and that's 150-3.4. Yeah. Okay. So the 150-10.41, I'm, I'm confused of what we're actually replacing here. So I think this has to do with betterments, right? 150.10.4? Yep. Yes, it's the per unit assessment. Right. So this gives authority. So what was removed was details about the calculations. And the comment from the engineers was, all of this exists in the statutory models. We should reference the statute and use the, the options within those statutory models instead of making it so detailed that it really limits the activity actions that can happen yeah. particularly if this as tim says if the statute changes we have to go back and change the bylaw if we refer the, the statute in its entirely entirety a statutory change doesn't affect our bylaw okay then we it gives us more flexibility to decide what we want okay the so then I, you have different options within the statute i am in favor of deleting everything it. in blue yeah gone gone yeah, yeah. And All right. Following the recommendations of the the sewer consultant. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And, yep. All right. We're I think we have consensus. So well. are you all set on that case? I think so. Let me just go. Let me just confirm that change before you. We are. We are all set. Or we are all in agreement. Yep. Okay. So I took. I confirmed that change, which physically removed it from the document. Yep. Okay. Um, and it goes from 10.4, I'm sorry, 150-10.4 Betterments, the authority, the next section, because we've eliminated that whole chunk of text, um, you go from Betterments to authority, assessing owners, calculation per unit, yep. and then Amen. the next one is 10.5, yes. which begins for the payment of the estimated. Correct. Yep. And I think that's those are the only things, Tim, right? I believe that's all I that's, think that's right. Yeah. Yep. That's everything he brought up to you, right? Yep. Okay. I'm good with that. That was one thing he had mentioned to me about that. So okay, good. So do you want a, a motion to approve the as they're drafted, a motion to approve for the hearing would be useful. I'll make a motion to approve as uh, revised uh, to be presented to public hearing. The second. Oh yes, yeah, second. Sorry. No, it's okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, was there anything else you needed on that? Uh, regulations we're not doing yet, correct? Not so. doing regulations. We left them in there and came in case they came up as a topic. But mm -hmm. I do think so. I did send a question to Lisa about the special act. Okay. Um, if you recall, Lisa's comments on the special act overall are uh, revolve around the fact that the special act is so old we do need to make some modernization for sure to it and so that's one of the reasons the hearing notice includes both those items right okay and i just sent um alex hasn't seen it yet but i just sent a note to alex to schedule the notices anticipating that we would make the revisions to the sewer bylaws for consideration and we can address the act and its questions <clears throat> what i would say for the hearing trevor and for the rest of the board is if there are specific questions about the act um if we can get those so that we can forward them to council it may reduce some of the concerns and allow us to get um information so that you're prepared to answer some questions now if we can have counsel for about 30 minutes that might be helpful but i would suggest that we refine questions to the act first yeah, while yeah. she's there right that's that's fine okay, okay. so Next um for purposes of that we'll 
produce the notice. It'll run on the 5th and the 12th yep. and we will provide this revised copy and what's in the bylaw or in the special legislation in the warrant um, so that, that those hearing materials are available for the next couple weeks. And then, yeah, so for the special acts uh, stuff, I just wanted to make sure if we did decide to change that language, we can do that at the hearing, correct? I'm just worried about like- We would have, so it's already gonna be produced in the warrant. What we would have to do is if you decide to change some at the something at the hearing, we would have to be able to do make that change in the motion. Well, it's really that question that you posed to her tonight. So I don't know how quickly you're printing that, but. Um, well, I have to I have to put the sewer or, bylaw into the, the text of the warrant. And I don't expect to be able to get that done until tomorrow. But functionally, again, if there's a change to either one of those things, particularly with the bylaw, because this is a general bylaw, the, the restrictions on what can be done in a motion are, are less stringent. We're not talking about the bylaw. We're talking about the acts. Exactly. But I'm I'm what I'm saying is, is there are there is the availability to make changes in a motion. So if you want to change something as a result of the hearing, one of two things is going to happen. If we can't make a change in the motion for the special act, then we pass it over. If we can, we make the change and present it as part of the guide to town meeting. And, and I guess the only thing I'm asking is that, is it substantive change in favor or not in favor if we added that, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you can make a change that is not as restrictive. And so that's the question. If if that's, that's really the meat of it is, is this a substantive change? Right. Putting a, because a, a block I on think it at 20% versus it's, nothing at all. I think because it's more restrictive, it would not be interpreted as substantial. So we could okay. do it maybe. All right. That I, might, Carolyn might be right. Lawyers would have yeah. to decide that, and the AG could still reject it. As so, just to clarify, when are the the public hearings scheduled? On what date? The public hearing is scheduled for six o'clock on the nineteenth. Okay, so that's what I already have in my calendar. Was yes. The... Yep. It coincides with a regular meeting, <clears throat> and that's going to be a busy meeting. But I tried after I heard some conversation last night at the finance committee meeting, it occurred to me to see if I could get Lisa at that meeting, at least for the first part of it. Does that, um, do we, do, do, can that also serve as a rate hearing? Are you going to be ready for that or is that got to be something? So we have to do a 30 day notice for a rate hearing. I actually just scheduled a conference call with Justin, Kevin, Dave Prickett, so tomorrow so that we can they had some questions on rate questions in order to give us um options. what we would need the rate development paperwork for people to review right okay sounds good that needs to be posted so the earliest we could do that meeting or that um hearing would be only if we can get this published and i don't know that we would be able to get this the earliest we could probably do that is the 19th or the second meeting in november because we don't have enough time to get a notice published right okay well i know we got to get on that fairly soon because we got to get the bills out i i sent that's what prompted a meeting request from justin as i sent an email out with a calculation you know a time frame calculation thank you um, okay, so that's everything with sewer at the moment. We move on to our meaty topic, the town warrant. Um, town warrant. Town warrant. So, that up in front of me here. Um, so, do we want to just run down one by one and get through this? Uh, yeah, let's go one by one. We'll start with the first one. Passover, correct? We can actually, no, we can actually remove it. Oh, okay, so let's so we could reduce this by one Warren article, which I think would make the moderator happy, although he hasn't opined on that yet. All right, sounds good. Uh, second one is to adding 60,000 of the contracted services, which is really a lot of that is the engineering for the Leary lot. Correct. Um, I sensed that we're going to have some, a lot of questions and we really have no plan for 
what that Leary lot's going to look like and everyone's going to be going, why are we spending all this money? I just think we got to do a little homework before town meeting on that. Okay, so to that effect, um, one of the things I did with a request to Berkshire Design, because we had talked to them before about it, was with the basic information that Ty and Bond developed, they can build on that. Mm -hmm. But the cost for that initial project two years ago was about $380,000. It's not gonna cost $380,000. I can tell you right now. Can it's gonna be a lot more. We've seen that escalation just in the Tilton Library project. Um, well, if we, you, if you can minute. dig out the MVP. And I have it. I've already sent it to Berkshire Design. We My have question it. though is that three, I thought the 300,000 was for pervious pavement. And if you don't, use pervious payment it's less money it might reduce it but we don't know and so we all know that engineering is 10 to 15 percent of any project so oh. fifty thousand is all right is reasonable but if there are questions or if people don't support it right we can use arpa money what i'm concerned about is preserving as much of the arpa money as possible for the construction costs yes. but I, I just want to state that the reason, one of the reasons, the driving factor not to use ARPA money for design is just that it's it. so many hoops and so much. Yep. In Correct. It would save us time and money. Time right. And money. It would save us time and money. And so that does preserve some of the ARPA funding, um, especially if the project gets expensive. But there's some, it saves me time for procurements. It saves money that might be related to procurements. And Frankly, it will facilitate the project faster. Okay, so um, moving on. Ten thousand of that sixty is for additional um, technical assistance in our consulting line items and because we're going to need it for some of the activities that we didn't anticipate at the time we built the budget. Okay, we're going to um, roll through these quickly. The uh, 5,000 we're comfortable with, we know that's adding for um, help in our office. I think everyone's agreed with that, finance approved it. Um, the next one, we're still waiting on trying to get a number. We may have to pass this over, but we'd really love to pay off our unemployment. So um, we know what that is. We're just waiting for time to kind of get Right, that. we may not have the, mon mon the number at the time we publish, but we would have it for the motion. The next item is uh, 34,000. It looks like you've adjusted that a little bit for- um, I adjusted it after a conversation about the cost for transportation. Okay, so that's good. That's for, um, for Smith folks. That would be the remainder we need for the new student and yep. to balance the tuition, uh, the transportation costs and possible tuition impacts from this third student if there were special ed costs. So we need to decide tonight, do we support the 30,000 for the town uh town's 350th anniversary because i think we need to approve that before it goes finance didn't right. want to talk about it until we did so um i don't know what everyone how's everyone feel about that I, um this is just this is more or less a safety net i agree um yep. the friends of deerfield have already this is september before 2023 Friends of Deerfield have already raised in the bank $23,000. It seems like they're on track. It's just that the gala jubilee celebration on December 31st, which was an anticipated start of the kickoff year for 2023 celebration, was supposed to be a moneymaker. And it looks really like it's going to be break even because of the situation. Mm -hmm of having to um, rent dishes and linens and yep. even shovel snow. So are you in favor of this, Tim, moving forward? Um, yeah. OK. Do you want to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the Article 6. Do you have a second? And I'll second that. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. You, and only, it, you only have a 350th every 350 years so i think right. it's worth and the money will doing. go back to free cash i, I, I if, find that we probably won't use much of it at all if anything but no. it's good to have a safety so yeah okay um to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate this is the forty thousand for the truck for the correct for the uh wastewater treatment plant this is, comes out of um 
uh, it would come out of the enterprise fund retained earnings no. or some other source in the enterprise fund. And I, I think there was going to be some, yes, it is going through, uh, Casey already put a capital request in. I think they will, fl that committee will flush out. Is there a used truck? Is there not a used truck? Do you really need a truck? All that stuff will get flushed out do you, there. Do you I'm have in favor a, of doing this. Yeah. To move forward. Do you have a date for the capital improvement committee meeting? I do not, but we also, the select board has to hold a hearing on this, not less than seven days prior to town meeting. So we may have to have a special meeting on the 17th. Yep. Okay. Um, I haven't been able to talk to Mark. I just sent another email out with the last capital um, improvement revision that I see for our activities. And that includes the con the revisions to the congregational church if we leave this article on here. And again, I think um, at least we the only to... other revision that's necessary is Tilton Library has to submit a revision of their capital improvement request. So article eight. Uh, this is the 110 for the church. Correct. I good there. I think it makes sense because we're not taking the building down. Let's let's beef up the floor. Let's fix the steeple. Let's fix the truss. And then we have some money I'm, to I'm do some fun. other stuff. Um, yeah. Do you, do you want me to? Um, do, do we need to vote on that? Do we need to vote on that? It seems we're like we're all in agreement. Yeah. It, I had consensus agreement before. That's why it's still here. <laughs> It was a question of me complying with your request to put numbers in here. This is as tight as I could get based on your discussion at the last meeting. So 110,000 is kind of bare. It does get us further. However, comma, we really don't know what I know what some of the costs are going to look like. Yep. But we have other sources. Keep in mind though, there is a a, a conversation with the boo that still needs to happen. So that and, and I guess when you I guess the question is, when you print this, do you need to have that dollar amount in these articles? I mean, well, I, you had said you wanted me to put them in. Well, what I wanted was some, I didn't really care if they're in there. I just wanted to really, for us, discussion and, and people to kind of have an idea of what we're doing. But if you feel like it's- No, oh, I, in this case, I'm kind of reticent. On the other hand, if we're doing, if we're trying to be completely transparent, that's the lowest number I think we should go with. Okay. I could put in, provide a sum of money. And then we address it in the motion. Yeah, because that way you can print the thing. And then if we decide like, oh, it's 120 or one. Right. You can't go up, but you can go down. It's just a little play yeah. over the next couple of years. Yeah. That makes so I will revise that to say provide a sum of money. Okay. Sounds good. The 4,000 makes sense for the senior housing. Fine. So here's the problem. I did get an email. And so that's actually a correction you don't see. I got an email from Lily, and she says she's not sure 4,000 is enough. So I made a revision and I didn't have time to print it out for all of you, but I made a revision that says provide a sum of money. There you go. That's fine. If she can get it to me before I publish, great. If she can't, at least we've notified that we're going to ask for money. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. It, it's, it just gets it, a little flexibility. It's right. Be because what work. happened is it's a 30% increase in staffing in, yeah. from the quote that we originally right. got. That so makes sense. Um, it, for, you know, for the contractor that we. And they have a meeting tomorrow, right, Carolyn? Yes, we have a meeting okay. tomorrow. So we can nail, try to nail down the exact number, but. Finance loved article 10. So it's good to, res, you know, remove. Yes. They want to see that, that hundred thousand dollar be rescinded. Yep, we're good on Article 11. We're just waiting. So the only questions from finance on that were, what's good, what's it going to look like? If it has no financial impact, they recommend it. Right. right. Um, and right now, we think we have enough funding built into, if there was a ratification from highway, right. um, we could be in, in good shape for that. We know we already have the money for okay. um, the police department. And this is actually a technicality vote. The only reason we had to put this back for police is because the ratification wasn't dated um, at the same time the town meeting vote was taken. They hadn't sent it back to us in time. Article 12 is good. This is the um, new pro TIF. And then uh, Article 13 is the land, uh, Article 13 and 14 are, are land swap or land purchase. Land disposition and then land acquisition. Acquisition, those two things are really swapping property for the Hamshaw development and for the Leary lot development. Perfect. And then 15 is the, um, is the home rule petition to do the, uh, to, to extend service for our police officers. Correct. 
and then um, article 16 is the acts of 1935 change and right now the text stands it as, as it is I mean again the substantive change question I have to ask Lisa what she says I'd be curious about that um, and then the um, 17 is our bylaw which I think we all felt really good about tonight so that's good yeah. and 18 is the um, is the funding article for the library um, okay and that's the way you want them in the order you want them correct no it looks good and just point of clarification since we deleted one item will all these numbers change by these one? numbers will change by one so i deleted number one when i go back and accept all the track changes those numbers will change but functionally the the subject matter you just discussed will be in the order you just discussed it yep and i should let you know i think it's in your packet but there are so besides capital improvement planning there's work that planning board has to do in terms of recommendations you saw an email that i sent that indicates the articles without the article numbers but indicates the articles that they should address at their next meeting prior to special town meeting and okay. one of them's a little iffy the rest of them go to land municipal purpose or some sort of uh, public development and so we're talking about land dis acquisition and disposition. We're talking about the library because that's a change to a municipal building. The concert, the congregational church, church also repairs or a change to a municipal building. The Leary lot because it's an improvement to municipal property the way I read the bylaw. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a big change for downtown. Planning. And then the, on, the one that was kind of a question, but I sent it anyway, was the TIF because the TIF requires designation of economic opportunity area, for sure. That's which could be, con which is a consideration for the public good. For sure, yeah. They so I be. sent it to them. I don't know if Lisa's gonna agree with me or disagree with me, but better safe than sorry was my thought. They had more review in town on this stuff, so it, it feels good. Um, and then you've got in here the, um, the ballot question for the, Yes. So the, just so you know, both the article and the ballot question have been reviewed by MLBC, Bond Council and Town Council. There were two changes made. One is in the article where the words and expend were added as it relates to accept in the section where it talks about the grant to accept and expend and expend was added at the recommendation of MLBC. The change that happened with the ballot question, um, a revision from Rick Manley, Bond Council, came back to me so that it more closely mirrors the intent of the annual town meeting article. Okay. So I made that change. So you don't see the ballot question here, but I made that change on the ballot question draft that I gave you tonight. Okay. It does not have to be addressed. In other words, you don't have to call the special election quite yet because Lisa has said there's some preparatory work that staff has to do before you can officially you know, take votes and sign documents. What I wanted you to be able to see is what the approved ballot question will look like. So you'll see there's a highlighted section of that piece of paper that says October 12th. That's the earliest you can do it you really need to do it by the 19th, which is the next week, in order to comply with the 35 day requirement. Right. Okay, it's 35 days. All right. I knew it was something like that. So. Yep. Okay. Um, that's okay with me. That's done. So, got a little bit of mail. Oh, and I want to thank uh, Chris Curtis for um, sending a geothermal project um, letter of support for the geothermal project. Perfect. Yeah, yes, I saw that. Town. And I also want to thank uh, Jim McGovern for sending a lot of uh, support for um, getting extra money for the library expansion um, oh. if this goes through the legislature. Great. I did not see that. That's yeah. good news. Thank you. I didn't see it either. Thank you. I'll make sure I go home yeah. and uh, forward it to anyone who's not on the. Yeah. On that. That's all. Trevor, can I ask one question before you get too much further? Um, information night scheduling. Initially, we wanted to do information night prior to town meeting, the special town meeting. The 19th is the closest date, which may mean that it will be freshest in people's minds. Yep. 
but you have a hearing that night. So my consideration is, could we trim that agenda back quite a bit so that we have time to go through the information session? And we may see documentation from Julie um, as part of the information session. She has a lot of, Tim isn't necessarily aware of this, but um, last night at the finance committee, she has a lot of background information um, related to borrowing and debt and stuff that could be really useful to share with the public. I don't know what form it will look like, but I did ask her to participate and, and sort of give the benefit of her work, her analysis to everybody as part of our sharing information prior to town meeting. And so your ask was on our regular agenda, you will just keep it thin. To, so I would put that in as after the hearing as an appearance right. and try to focus you know, I don't know how long it'll take. Hopefully we could keep it at half an hour or less, but every meeting you guys have a lot to do. So what I wanna be sure everybody understands is if we hold off on some things, it's because we have a critical issue we need to get through, which is the information session. I think pre-town meeting is most important and obviously sewer hearing as well. So we do those two items and, and listen to Julie's stuff. And then what, if there's all- Unless it's critical. We can get through it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Actually better to do it all in that night. I do too. Yeah. Makes so sense. I'm um, fine with that. So do, do you want to hit on any of the, um, let's see, there, oh, there's one other unanticipated, I just wanted to get out of the way, was the request for comments, um, zoning board of appeals. Yes. Six railroad, rail yard road. And mm -hmm. this, um, to, to do a business in one of the, I think it's an empty building there now, correct? I'm not really sure. I'm not super familiar with that spot, but I looked it up on the map. It's in the, it's adjacent to the rail yard and it's going to be doing some trucks and like, you know, more commercial storage. Uh, uh, I think it's perfect uh, for yeah, that location. I mean, it but seems to be, I mean, I can't think of any I issues. don't have any comments other than in favor of the project or waiting to hear from. To you know, utilize the space. Yeah, to utilize the space for sure. I mean, I think it, it seems like the perfect place I, for a business like that. So I, I would say that we have no concerns, Casey. Yep. Okay. Tag, you're it, Alex. Yep. Any other, um, do you, so do you want to hit on any of these other placeholders tonight? Or do you? Yeah, so Hamshaw, for instance, Hamshaw, um, we haven't had um, any further communication with them. They, I will have to notify them that we have settled the articles to yep. do some form of land exchange. So they're aware that we're trying to keep our, our promise to have town meeting address the ability to dispose of and or exchange two yep. pieces of land. So those two articles relate to that. Right. Um, the, so the policy question, these are policies, one, the telecommuting, we had in process, but we need to handle additional policies. Uh, we don't have a drug policy, and that's kind of something that Kevin and I are going to have to look at, but general bylaw employees, we don't have a drug policy. There might be some issues that we have to discuss with the union, um, so an impact bargain situation. But it is something that we haven't had in place and we really should put in place. And dress code is also something that, as our staff evolves, we need to sort of tighten up what what we represent when people walk through the, any of our doors. I, I, um, in a lot of places we have uniforms, that's not the problem, but in other places we don't. Right. And then we do need to make some revisions to our harassment policy to broaden it out. Right now it's really kind of hyper-focused on sexual harassment, but there's other types of harassment that really should be mentioned. And I have a previous policy I used in Ashfield that I would like to at least have council look at. And I want you to know that I think we do have to make some changes. It partially comes out of the conversations you've had the last two meetings, but functionally, we just need to expand the definitions because harassment crosses all sorts of boundaries now. Again, and there is one other policy that we need to consider and that's a HIPAA policy. We don't actually have one in place. And it's um, in one of our contracts, it's a contractual requirement. Mm -hmm. So we should address that. Again, so I just want you guys to know this is what I'm asking council to help me develop or develop for me, depending um, on the amount of time. 
You're not ready on the assistant town administrator yet? I'm not ready. Here's my question for you. Um, and I have a conversation scheduled. Um, we had to, so finance committee last night, they asked me to attend their meeting on Friday. In the event that more than one member of the board decides to attend that, which might be useful so you can go through the warrant with them. I would like to, I, don't I might have the information to be able to bring a recommendation to you by Friday. So is it possible for at least two of you to do that, or perhaps we do something quick remotely on Saturday? I would, I would rather, well. I'm not gonna be here Friday. I mean, I don't know what time I'll get back Friday, so I won't be around. Yeah, I figured you weren't gonna be here. I'm doing the clinic at the church in the morning, and then I got to run to the airport, right. pick up my son, and then I'm doing the clinic till seven at night. That'd be a hard time, then. And I got to clean up, you know, knock down, and I mean, it's going to be like seven thirty yeah. or eight, probably. Okay. I mean, I, I'm really not available at all on Friday. I mean, I don't even have like a minute. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. What time is um, the finance committee thing going to happen? Say that again. What, what, what uh, finance was, committee. Yeah, what is that Friday time? The Friday time is 5.30. They actually posted, and we mirrored the posting for the select board just in case. They posted on Saturday for 3.30. And is it virtual or in person? Um, I think, Alex, theirs is hybrid, right? So I think we posted for hybrid as well. Um, I mean, hybrid stuff I might be able to do, but uh, on Saturday or something like that. Saturday. Right. It's not like I like to do this, Mr. Say No, You Have a Life. Um, yeah. It's not like it's my first It's my first um, request. On the other hand, because we've had some, some high-level emergencies in the last couple days, some of the processing that needed to be done around the appointment recommendation wasn't able. Okay. I didn't get it completed. Oh, I understand. That's fine. So if we have to wait two weeks, it's not the end of the world. It's just going to be pretty hectic. Yeah, right? I mean, October, we should do it like October 1st uh, if we don't have any alternative. Yeah. Um, and we could do it virtually. And so if you need to post something um, in order to allow us to do it October 1st, then I would suggest you do it. And if we can find some other way to resolve it. Are you gone on the third? I'm gone on the third, or yeah. They're right. both gone as of the third. Okay, so yeah, if, if you need something Saturday, if it's hybrid, I could do that, or I could run down, or something like that. But Friday, I will be probably driving, so I won't be around. We could. Do you want to do hybrid, or do you want to do remote? Well, oh, hybrid, if anything, right? Yeah, I'm not really what? sure. I'm, I where I'm going to be on Saturday at three thirty. Well, we're so. posted, so just yeah. text on Saturday, Friday, yeah. and see where we're at. If it's if it's if I can get online, I will try to get online. Yeah, but um, are we talking about Saturday? At, Saturday. At 3.30? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just go ahead and post it, and I'll make sure that I can zoom in and yeah. if Trevor can. Okay. Here. Yeah, if we do hybrid, if yeah. one person is in the office, yeah. I mean, otherwise, we just do, re we revise the posting and do remote, and yeah. then everybody can get on however they need to. We're still allowed to do that. Oh, then do remote. Yeah, let's yeah. do remote. Okay, let's do remote. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Alex. You get to fix that. <laughs> Poor Alex. Do, do you need, well, yeah, I can do that. But do you need to revise it to be remote only? Yes. So because yep. no, now, if one person's here, it can be hybrid. That means the public could come in and join us. Exactly. So if, so if it's going to be remote, it has to say remote only on it. Yep. yep. I'm not sure where I'm going to be. So, you know. I, I don't want to commit to coming down here. That's why we have the one tap option. I love the one tap option. I use it all the time, Carolyn. <laughs> it means you can do one tap on your phone if you have the invite no, well, and it links you right in. <laughs> we'll see if we can get in. <sighs> okay, Any anything else? Do you want to hit on anything else, Kate? So, <clears throat> Thank you for working with Julie. Um, they need to get going on that negotiation. Um, the only other things that right now I have are really 
the assistant town administrator, and I was hoping I would have been ready for it, but I just, there were things I just couldn't get to. Um, and making sure that here's what's got to happen with the warrant. I will make the revisions. I will send them out. We're going to print things. Um, my question for you is with these changes to the special town meeting warrant, will the board um, agree to have us make those changes and prepare the documents for this select board's approval and signature at their convenience? Yeah. Yep. So, do we need a motion on that? Yes, please. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilgey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you both. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. And so does Carly. <laughs> um i guess i know we were trying to finish up uh get everybody out tonight any yep. other business i'm not going to weigh it down a lot of the stuff that i need you guys to be aware of i'm emailing you blind carbon copying you so you can see that i'm progressing on certain topics for sure yep and i just want to take a quick second to say thank you to casey for working with me so well on getting this leary lot stuff moved forward i think it was a great collaboration and i i really appreciate all the help you gave me we're we had help. Thank you. You guys help. <laughs> so does Alex. So does everybody. Yes, I'd like to thank Alex too. He's really stepped up over the last few. I mean, you've stepped up a lot, but I mean, just even in the last couple months to really pitch in and help out when we've had yes. here and there and really you're doing a fantastic job and with a smile and uh, helping everybody you can and very grateful for that. And I want the public to know how hard Absolutely. you work for us. I was just going to say even little stupid things like copying. Anything. You've been doing it's, Alex has been so helpful and it, it really, even though it's hectic, because we are missing a person, even though it's hectic, it's really been useful for both of us because we're learning new things and we're working with other staff members to refine some of the things we're doing. And so this, this is an experience Alex certainly may not want, but can definitely take with him. <laughs> Uh, if I didn't want it, I wouldn't still be here. Exactly. So I definitely, I'm all, I'm on board, and thank you all. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Um, okay. So, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make that motion. I will second that motion. All those in favor? Tim Hilgey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all so much.